Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about WSL2 and how to customize it more to your liking. I like having disposable environments, environments which I can quickly spin up and spin down and the environments which are reproducible. What do I, what do I mean by reproducible? Well, environments which are exactly the same before I started tinkering with them, right? So if you're working on a project, let's say you're working on a development project or something, you want the same set of libraries, you want the same version of particular file or you know, you want the same version of Python or what have you. Um, the way to do, th the way to ensure that everything is exactly the same is known as reproducible environment. And this is one of the reasons why Docker is such a success because a Docker image is a perfect replica every time, right? So even if you break something while you're experimenting, you can just go back and spin up the same Docker image again, right? If your container breaks, no big deal. The image does not change. Now, how does that relate to WSL? As it turns out, WSL is nothing fancier than a hypervisor like Hyper-V running a Linux VM. Of course, there is a lot of interoperability in, involved in there where you know the VM talks to the host and is integrated with the Windows host very directly kind of opposite of how a normal virtual machine would work where you would want the virtual machine to be isolated from the host for security and other reasons but in case of WSL because it's targeted towards developers it is it actually interoperates really well with the rest of the Windows system okay so WSL, as it turns out, can take any root file system in tar.gz or just tar format and turn it into a WSL distro for you, right? So in this way, you, in this manner, you can run CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, what have you. In fact, if you install the Microsoft Store uh, Ubuntu app, what it does basically is, is install a let me see. Hmm. So if I go to my downloads, I actually have the same, this particular app downloaded as an Apex file. And if you inspect its contents, if you go and uncompress it, because it is actually just an archive, uh, let's uncompress it. And if you go in there, you would see there are a few folders here and i think we'll have to uncompress it one more time yep uh, looks like that let's see hmm. this one seems right this is for arm and this is for x86 so if you go to the x86 version and okay windows 11 has added steps to this but fair enough we can do that we can deal with it no, no, don't you install that. Oh, yeah. If you go in there and you see, right, there is a Ubuntu 2004 exe file, which will just basically run the distribution for you from command line. And there is this install.tar.gz. So if you were to take this, right, if I were to do this, WSL import. Uh, let's call this distribution Ubuntu test. Uh, have it in the directory Ubuntu. Okay, let's see if it takes underscores. I don't know if Windows accept underscore in the path name, but we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, so if I just take that, instead of installing the whole Windows Store app, I just import the tar gz file like this. It should work if I have done everything right. Hmm. And now if I do WSL distribution Ubuntu test, voila, we are in a Ubuntu environment, right? I can run apt update and it will start doing its thing. So this is how it works. Now the way I like to work with it is let me just delete this first on register Ubuntu test. Okay. 
and now if you see I just have one distribution open and running which is Alpine and let me just unregister that as well now the reason I showed you that is because I want you to understand that this will work with any distribution whatsoever hmm. let's just go to a proper clean directory users are desktop WSL and more importantly you can automate the entire process now what do I mean by that I have another dot tar dot GZ file here I have another distribution which is simply alpine dot tar dot GZ if you want to get alpine Linux as your WSL environment you don't have to go very far just go to alpine Linux dot org you don't have to do any of the apex shenanigans just go to downloads go to mini root file system and get the image that runs on your laptop right so if you have a surface book which is running arm god i mean oh my god like get a different laptop first of all but if you still want to run it then you know if you're running windows on arm get one of these images um, i'm running x86 so i already have this downloaded and saved right so that's that if i do import alpine I can import the image and now I have an uh, Alpine environment but let's take it a step further let's say I need certain libraries I need certain you know packages pre-installed in my system and I have very specific needs as to how my prompt should look what variables and bash aliases I need how my shell setup is and all of that now how do I automate that well WSL actually makes it uh, a bit easy for you to do that if you if you run this command which is WSL let me zoom in a little bit WSL minus D your distribution name exec and then I set an environment variable here just to show what the working directory is but you don't need to run it you can in fact just skip the entire this entire bit here just to make it easy right and then you can run any arbitrary script I have just called my script setup.sh which is in this directory WSL will just run it so let's run it and then I'll show you the contents of the script let's hope it works first of all yeah feels looks like it's running just fine yeah so after the script is run I shut down WSL subsystem for a second and then I restart it again now I'll show you why I have to shut it down but first of all let's appreciate it right like so you see um, if I go here I have my SSH keys already added I'm not going to show that to you for obvious reasons I have my profile already set this is not the default profile that you'll get with Alpine Linux this is my custom profile and I have my git configuration set up right so if I do cat dot git config you can see my name and everything is here and this is a fresh install right so this kind of automation really helps me with my productivity because let's say I, I play around with the system I install a ton of packages and then I lose track of what I have on the system right um, I can just nuke everything back first of all back up your data so let's say I have a couple of repositories here I'll do a git push push them all to github or gitlab and then I can just nuke the entire subsystem and then rebuild it up with two simple commands right and that's the magic of automation right you don't have to worry about things getting out of hand because it's going to be the same image of course the packages are updated because you need security and other uh, patches you know to roll in but they don't have to be you know you can pin your repositories right like every repository every package manager has what is known as package pinning you can pin a package to a specific version if you want and you can work on it for as long as you like so with that ramble out of the way let's look at the contents of my setup script right so if I yeah so my setup script is very simple right it's bin sh I'm not even using bash you can use bash or z shell or what have you I like to keep things cross-platform so the same sh script would work on alpine which doesn't ship with bash and the same script will work with 
Ubuntu, which comes with Bash, but can run it in like four six shell mode as well, which is just a very minimal shell, right? And th there are a bunch of if else statements. If the ID is Alpine, then you know there. Then there are apk specific commands. Here you can see me installing all the packages I need. Here's the uh, personal workspace setup, right? So I'm just creating a new user. I'm adding all my profiles. So these are just here docs, right? These are just blocks of text that will be added to my user file. I'm setting the permissions, right? I'm adding the user to sudo, which again, like you might want to do that if you if you don't want to run everything as root. So by default, when you import something by tar.gz, everything works as root, but you might not want that, right? So um, yeah, so you can create a new user, um, add the SSH keys from a external hard drive that I have plugged in. That's another one of the things that you may, may or may not want. But again, right, like this is just my shell script. Whatever your work environment is, whatever your needs are, you can script it out, right? Like that's what, that's the message I'm trying to um, impart with this video, right? Like the specifics of my script is not that important. One of the things that is important though, if you do create um, default user like R, I have created R in my case, then the question is how do you log in as R, right? Like you don't want to like do run WSL and then run sudo minus u r and then you know get into your user, right? No, you want to set your default user as the user you drop into when you run WSL. And for that WSL actually has a interesting file called wsl.conf again the documentation for that will be in the description there are a bunch of things that you can set in wsl.conf for your specific distribution and wsl will respect that so the first thing is default user right like i can set a user uh, i can set a default user to be r or any other username you want to create and then for interoperability there are a bunch of flags this is not that important but i like to not add a Windows path to my WSL system so the false here signifies that and then there are a bunch of other commands which are again not important the point is again when you create this configuration file for the changes of this file to take effect you have to shut down the system and then restart it again not your entire Windows system just the WSL subsystem which is why you saw me running shut down and then again I open the whole thing right I did that because otherwise I would have logged in as root into my Alpine system I didn't want that right so if I do a who am I now I'll be R so that is it I think that's enough rambling for a very simple message so I'll call it today there have a nice one